buddy. Uh, as you all know, normally this is the night when Brother Stevenson has the open form. But the brother is uh, performing a wedding today, so that's why we're on my phone But we do have a treat, so uh, we have our brother Javier that's going to be the lesson tonight. And I'm pretty sure it will be great and uh, we can follow along with that brother with before we get started, do we have anyone that has a request before we get started? All right, if not, then I'll go ahead and do all the mind and open us up with a word of prayer. Uh, shall we go to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us this time to come together and study another portion of the word. Heavenly Father, we pray for our good brother. Javier, that will be bringing our lesson tonight. We pray that uh, you be with him and lift him up and spread to him. Bring those things back to his remembrance and with the study that he may bring forth the bread of life. And before, Heavenly Father, we also thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. And also, Heavenly Father, we just want to pray and uplift those that are taking vows of holy matrimony. Uh, our brother Nick and Sabrina, we pray that you bless keep their union. And for the couple that Brother Stevenson is, is one of their marriage tonight, we also hope and pray that you bless and keep their union as well. Heavenly Father, we pray that for all of those who are going through some physical ailment right now, that you be with them, restore them a reasonable portion of their health and their will. Heavenly Father, we also pray for those that are going through bereavement at this time, Heavenly Father, and we just pray that they look to you for, for their comfort, Heavenly Father, for we know that the Bible teaches us to look to the hills for what coming to our heaven. Also, Heavenly Father, I would like to pray for my wife, Heavenly Father, that you be with her, her, her spiritual health as well as her physical health, that you just uplift her in the things that she stands in the need of. And we pray for everyone here that's on this Zoom study tonight, for the families that are represented. And the Father, we pray that you bless each and every one of them, and that you also give them those things that they stand in the need of. And the Father, we pray for the saints worldwide, for those that are on the way. And the Father, we pray that they come into repentance, and the Father, that be your will, and that they be restored back into the faith. And we pray for those that are lost, Heavenly Father, that have no faith now. Once again, Heavenly Father, we pray to be your will that they come into the knowledge of the truth and obey the gospel for the last. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost, for those things that he does in our life. And Heavenly Father, we for those of us who obey the gospel, that we have received him as a gift. These things and more, Heavenly Father, we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior. And we also pray that he forgive us of any sins that we have committed in words on the deed, that we have a heart of repentance and we turn away from us, Heavenly Father. That we live our lives in a manner that is well pleased and on your sight. And that we can live faithful unto death, that we may hear those words that we all long to hear. Well done, good faith and service. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, once again, everyone, uh, we're going to have uh, Brother Javier to deliver our message tonight. So, with that being said, uh, Brother Javier, the floor is yours. Man, God bless you, Brother Green. Thank you for the prayer as well. Um, this, uh, this Saturday evening, I want to touch on a subject that uh, we discussed a few months back, but I wanted to maybe go a little bit more in depth uh, into the subject. And uh, just the title of it is uh, from Isaiah 53, uh, Who Had Believed Our Report and To Whom Is the Arm of the Lord Revealed? To Whom Is the Arm of the Lord Revealed? So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, so when it comes to the strength of the Lord, of the arm of the Lord, Isaiah 53, 2 says, For he shall grow up before him. As a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, he has no form nor comeliness. We shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire. Despised, he is despised, rejected of men, man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. 
he was despised and we esteemed him not. And so we know this is a prophecy concerning Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. Uh, Philip and the eunuch are reading this chapter. Uh, but I want to just talk about concerning the revealing uh, portion. You know, when it comes to us, we, we have the New Testament and the Old Testament. In the time frame of uh, Jesus Christ when he was born, they, they just had the Old Testament at that time. So I want to kind of put our, our, our feet inside of their sandals and just see what they saw. And, you know, as students of the Bible that they were, they studied the Old Covenant to try to figure out uh, concerning Christ, concerning what his words represented, concerning the kingdom that was promised of the Old Covenant. And so I just want to, for a second, go back in time and just put on those same uh, sandals that they wore and go through their life and go through their uh, time frame and kind of like eavesdrop as the Holy Ghost is eavesdropping on uh, their conversations. I want to just look at what they were talking about. When you look at Matthew chapter uh, number 16, verse 13, uh, where Jesus is talking to his disciples in this chapter, he asked them in this chapter, Verse 13, when he came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some said that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee but my Father, which is in heaven. So I want to look at when it comes to those who had this information revealed unto them uh, concerning him being the Christ, concerning his plan, and the old covenant scriptures that they remembered uh, concerning what this king, or what this Christ was going to do, and just the excitement that they had back in that time frame. When you look at uh, Matthew chapter 11, looking at verse uh, number 25, the scripture says, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, because thou had hid these things from the wise and prudent, has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me, my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And so here we have a time frame where the Father is revealing unto his servants all over Jerusalem uh, who the Son is. Matthew 14, verse 33, we know what happened here in this verse. Then they that were in the ship came out, came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, thou art the Son of God. This is his disciples. Here in verse 4, uh, verse 33, when Jesus told them, and verse 31, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? When they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. And they said, Thou art the Son of God. And so there's many times when the Bible is going to reveal to servants of God that He is the Son of God. But they're not going to say in that same fashion. There's going to be different ways that they say that. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, uh, looking at verse 9, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, uh, the Bible says here, But as it is written... I had not seen nor ear heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that loved him. But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, say the Spirit of man which is in him, even so things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So at this time frame, uh, after the new covenant, God is revealing unto us, even as this mentions in Philippians and in Peter, He will re reveal even this unto thee, if anybody be otherwise minded. And so, but in the time frame of Christ, uh, there was a division because God was not revealing the information of the old covenant to every Jew or every Hebrew. There was a dissension. Why? Because some believe. And some did not. There was excitement. Why? Because some believed and some did not. There was envy because some did not believe. There was excitement. Why? Because others knew and believed and understood. But if you go to uh, Galatians 1, uh, looking at verse number 16 and 15 and 16, it says, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, called me 
by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I preferred not with flesh and blood so here we have where uh, it says to reveal his son in me. you know Paul was a minister he was an apostle and Jesus revealed himself uh, unto Paul and so when it comes to this time frame we know it's dealing with the New Testament if we go to John chapter 4 John chapter 4 where we deal with and we talk about the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman in verse number 20 uh, 24 it says God is a spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth the woman said unto him I know that Messiah cometh which is called Christ when he has come he will tell us all things Jesus said unto her I that speak unto thee am he I that speak unto thee and he now upon this came his disciples and Mark that he talked with this woman yet no man said what seekest thou why talkest thou with her the woman then left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ now a lot of people some people they they thought concerning Christ him just being a messenger Messiah and others understood because it was revealed unto them that this was Christ also and the Son of God. You know, and so this in verse number, uh, same chapter, verse number 40, uh, verse number 40. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days and many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the Savior of, of the world and so as Jesus was preaching God was revealing uh, unto different individuals concerning who he was exactly now when you look at uh, Daniel chapter 9 Daniel chapter 9 because she made a confession she said I know that Messiah cometh which is called Christ and is described of him in Daniel uh, the Old Testament Chapter number nine, down chapter number nine, looking at verse number, uh, looking at verse number twenty-five is where it describes Messiah. Then nine twenty-five, the Bible says, "Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous." Times and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are uh, determined. And so, when it comes to when it comes to this chapter and what a lot of Jews believe, when you look at Acts chapter number one, they believe that Christ was the Son of God. But they were uncertain concerning building, concerning what Jesus was going to do. In Acts chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they were thinking physical kingdom. They were reading these Old Testament scriptures in Daniel and the Old Testament. They're, they kept reading kingdom, kingdom. And some of them believed that this is the Son of God, but they were unsure concerning well he what's he going to rebuild I, I believe he's the son of god but what is he going to rebuild it now or what's going to happen verse 7 he said to them it is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the father put his, in his own power but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you you should be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and all judea and samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth that's the answer that he gave and in their mind they were thinking it was physical uh, restoration. Remember, at this time, Rome is the world power. And so they don't understand, they understood, I believe he was the Son of God, but some other things that they needed concerning his uh, communication, his clarity concerning the building of Jerusalem. If you look at Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, remember, they were looking at the Old Testament scriptures, trying to put together and understand what God was doing. What God was building, what Jesus was going to do. 
They were having debates, discussions in the marketplace. They were having discussions throughout the streets and in homes constantly for three years. This, this man named Jesus, what is he doing? What's he going to do? When's he going to build it? Where did he come from? Who is his mother? Who is his brother? Constant conversations, miracles being done consistently, uh, people being raised from the dead, uh, just consistent communication during this time frame. Isaiah chapter 7, looking at verse 14. The Bible says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That that term is described as God with us. God with us. So they, they, they look at this scripture as they're having debates, discussion. They say, how can a virgin conceive without a man? And then they look at the name Emmanuel. That means God with us. So they grab that scripture, and they use that to rightly divide it with other scriptures to understand God's will. They're searching. They're diligently seeking like the Bereans, searching the scriptures daily, whether those things are so concerned, this man named Christ that everybody is talking about. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, it gets a little clearer. Look at verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Okay, a son is given, many sons have been born. Okay, uh, the government should be upon his, upon his shoulder. A lot of kings have have governments upon their shoulders, from Solomon to King David to Saul. Okay, that's a, a normal thing. But here it says, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Okay, Counselor. And then it says, the Mighty God. Now that's a term a lot of kings were not called that. They weren't called the Mighty God. And so this raised a lot of attention, a lot of ears in the Hebrews' minds to concern the belief of this Christ, this Messiah. And they were putting these scriptures together because they could understand and believe concerning, okay, a son is born, a lot of sons are born, the government's going to be in on the shoulder, a lot of governments have been, have been on his shoulders, but then you have the mighty God, which has a distinction. It says, the everlasting Father is another detail, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it. Judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Bible says. This is a very uh, captivating scripture when it comes to the detail when Christ was on earth. You know, a lot of the leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees were on edge. They seen his power. They seen his miracles. They were, their nerves were just consistently in a, in a state of, uh, of daze and swirl. When you look at uh, Daniel 2, uh, looking at verse 44, remember it says his kingdom, Daniel 2, verse 44. We've read this many times. The Bible says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. It shall stand forever. Now they're rightly dividing some of the saints of Israel. What we read in Isaiah chapter 9. With Daniel chapter number 2 verse 44. And they're on edge. They're questioning many things. They're thinking about the Roman Empire. They're just, they're just in confusion. Some of them. Some of them God is revealing unto them. To give them comfort. Some of them they are receiving no comfort. Why? Because they don't believe. The Pharisees did not want to believe. They did believe. But they didn't want to obey. And get baptized under John's baptism. Some of them did not believe. It was a mixture of the two. Now when you look at another scripture here. In uh, Luke 19. Luke 19 verse 11. Uh, going to the New Testament. I'm going to look at another detail here. Luke 19 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain no man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. We know this story in this parable concerning talents. Five talents, ten talents, and the one that hid his one talent. But remember, he's describing unto them concerning the kingdom. Because a lot of them believe that it should suddenly, immediately appear, which is not the case. And he's describing concerning the church. 
and the kingdom of God. And so John chapter 1, looking at verse number 48. John chapter 1, looking at verse number 48. Here's another detail. The Bible says, this is Nathaniel, verse 47. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israel, and even whom is no guile, Nathaniel, said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before thy Philip called thee when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. But Daniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. Now, it was already told unto him in verse number 45. Philip found Nathanael said unto him, We found him of whom Moses in the law and of the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He said, We found him. Moses talked about him. The prophets talked about him. Remember we had those conversations about Moses and the prophets? Remember the, the Christ kept coming up? Moses brought him up. Isaiah brought him up. Jeremiah brought him up. And we finally found him. When Nathaniel said, he met him, he said, Thou art the Son of God, King of Israel. And so God already knew concerning Nathaniel's mind. He revealed it unto him as a faithful servant. Look at another scripture in uh, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, looking at verse 11. Luke 2, verse 11, going to uh, this book. The Bible says, actually, I want to start in verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. Now, <clears throat> These shepherds, God seen them faithful. God seen them faithful enough to tell them these details, enough, enough for the angels to come down and share them. This day is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And I want to look at those details concerning Christ the Lord and the detail concerning the Son of God. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew uh, chapter 26, this is a conversation that uh, they're having with Christ. Looking at verse... 62. The Bible says, And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is this which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. The high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the priest says, the Son of God. Why are they questioning him concerning this? They know the miracles that's going on. They know the preaching that he's preaching. They know the conversations that are being had all around Jerusalem concerning those disciples and servants that God has revealed concerning Jesus being the Son of God. But they don't like them. Verse 64, Jesus said unto them, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of glory. Then the high priest ran his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What rather, what rather need have we of witnesses? Oh, now you have heard this blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said he is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with their palms in their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he? Smote. Them. So when it comes to the confession, when it comes to what they did not want to believe, that he was the Son of God and is the Son of God, but they didn't want that to be true. They wanted to be a lie. He spoke the truth. Look at Luke chapter 2. Looking at Luke chapter 2. Looking at verse, uh, I want to start at verse number 25. Luke 2, 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the pair the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, after the custom of the law, then took he him up 
and his arms were blessed God and said, Lord, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Joseph and his mother marveled those things which were spoken of. Here in verse number 26, it says, Before he had seen the Lord's Christ. There's many times when there's a detail concerning the revealing of the Son of God, but it doesn't always say the Son of God. Sometimes it says the Lord's Christ. Now we're going to read a few chapters concerning uh, those details. Uh, if you look at uh, verse number 34, And Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against him. Again, this was a faithful man, Simeon. He read the Old Testament scriptures of Isaiah. A virgin shall conceive, Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 7. He recognized, hey, this is not going to be a normal birth. The mighty God is what he's called in Isaiah 9. He is prophesying what God told him to prophesy in verse 34. Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rise again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. How does he know that? How does Simeon know that? Because God is revealing unto him concerning Christ, concerning the Son of God, concerning what will happen in the future with this child and what he's going to cause. If you look at uh, Acts chapter 2, looking at verse 36, Acts 2, looking at verse 36, we've read this before. We've read this many times, several times, when it comes to preaching those who want to be saved. Acts 2, 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus, whom you crucified, O Lord and Christ. That is what it mentions in Luke uh, chapter number 2, the Lord's Christ. Now, did Peter not know that Jesus was the Son of God? Because he says, uh, he says both Lord and Christ. No, he knew that he was the Son of God. He just didn't mention in this in this particular verse, this particular chapter. It's mentioned again in Luke chapter 1, looking at verse 41. Look at Luke 1, 41. It's dealing with the angels. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord, the mother of my Lord, should come to me? For lo, as soon as thy voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. This is powerful concerning Elizabeth. She's prophesying concerning what's about to happen. And also, she said a distinct detail here. The mother of my Lord, is what she's saying, should come to me. She's describing Jesus Christ. You're the mother of my Lord, my King, when it comes to Christ being the Son of God. When you look at John, John chapter 10, John chapter 10, looking at verse number uh, 24, John 10, looking at verse 24, another detail here. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep. I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, when it comes to their questioning, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. God is not revealing it unto them. Why? Because they don't believe. He already, Jesus said in verse 25, I told you, you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name you bear witness to me. These Jews, these Hebrews are waiting for the Messiah. They're looking at the Old Testament scriptures. They're reading and understanding who this is going to be. When they come, it's revealed unto them. 
as well, because God is revealing it unto them. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, uh, looking at verse, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 30, looking at verse 1. Proverbs 30, verse 1. The words of Abir, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ethiel, even unto Ethiel and you call. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom or have the knowledge of the holy. Who had ascended up into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who had established all the ends of the earth? These are some powerful questions that he's asking. These are questions that other Hebrews in the time of Jesus were looking at as well. What is his name? We know that's the Father. Because who ascends up into heaven? Who descends? Who gathers the wind in his fist? Who bounds the waters in the garment? Who establishes the ends of the earth? We know that's God. And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? This is some powerful, detailed reading that's going on. He said, what is his son's name? That is a powerful detail because it's describing God in the first part of Proverbs. And then in the latter part of Proverbs, he says, what's his son's name? That question, those questions were on the Jews' minds as they read Proverbs 30. They were having Bible studies just like we have Bible studies. They were talking, hey, what is his son's name? They said, this is God, right? They're asking questions while they're talking to each other. 400 years, even during the time of Christ, even before Christ came, they're having the study of Proverbs. That conversation is coming up. This is God, right? Of course. What's his son's name? I don't know. Genesis chapter number 1, looking at verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, cattle over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. They're reading the scripture. Jews are. They're looking at that word us. Let us make man in our image. It's a powerful detail that they're getting. Then they're looking at Proverbs 30. Then they're looking at Isaiah chapter 9. The mighty God. Hmm. They're looking at all these details. They're seeking after God and God reveals the Son of God to these different Hebrews at different times, whether it be Simeon, whether it be Anna, whether it be Nathaniel, at different time frames, whether it be the shepherds, because they love him and they desire to know his will. They were even waiting. Who was a woman saying in John chapter 4, we know Messiah coming. When he comes, he's going to tell us all things. Look at another scripture here. In uh, chapter 11, verse 7, Genesis 11, verse 7, you know, the Tower of Babel was built. What does it say in verse 7? Go to, let us go down there and confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Again, it uses the word us in Genesis chapter 1, 26, and Genesis 11, verse uh, number 7. Same speech. Matthew chapter number 22, go back and Going back to the New Testament, Matthew chapter number 22, we're looking at another detail here that uh, God wrote down for us through his inspired word. Matthew chapter 22, looking at verse number 41, Bible says, While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They sent him the son of David. He said unto them, How then the David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions, the Bible says. So when it comes to the revealing, again, the Pharisees, they're already confounded within themselves. They already don't want to believe. When he asked the question, what do you think about him? Whose son is he? Son of David. Why? Because it says that in Isaiah chapter 9. They read Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through verse number 9, where it says, and I want to read it one more time when it comes to this prophecy. Isaiah chapter 9, looking at verse number 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth. 
from henceforth. So they couldn't answer the question, why does he call why does he call him Lord? Why does he do that? You know, and so when it comes to the Pharisees, when it comes to the Sadducees, when it comes to many of the Hebrews that did not want to believe, they want to stick to that doctrine, God is not going to reveal unto them concerning who he is, concerning who his father is, concerning who David is. Because David is saying that, but we know what he's talking about. In uh, the book of the same chapter we, that we read, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 41, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand till I make thy foes thy footstools. They were so confused as to what's going on. Why were they confused? Because they didn't believe. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. This is the Father talking to Jesus Christ. But they just were not able to see that. They didn't want to believe that he was the Son of God. They just didn't want to catch that. They were so uh, stirred in their own doctrine and blinded that they didn't want to believe this is the Son of God that's standing in front of you. <laughs> so when you look at another scripture here in Luke uh, chapter 17, let's go to Luke chapter 17, looking at verse number uh, Luke 17, verse 20. Luke 17, verse 20. This is also a part of belief that the Pharisees did not understand. Luke 17, 20. And when he was the, the man of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo, there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see the one of the days of the Son of Man, you shall not see it. Of course, those receive the Holy Spirit and add it to the kingdom, Colossians 1 13. That's how the kingdom of God is within you. But they're, again, they're looking for something physical. They're looking for an observation, something to look at, to give them belief and understanding. Look at John chapter 7. John chapter number 7. John chapter number 7. We'll get another detail here. Concerning the conversations that we're having. Again, we're eavesdropping on some of these conversations. Uh, let's look at verse. Actually, John 6. John 6, number 66. Forgive me. John 6, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus will unto the, the twelve, would ye also go away? Simon Peter asked it. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, confessing John, chapter number 6, looking at verse number 69. Let's go to another scripture, Matthew, chapter number 11. Matthew, chapter 11, looking at verse uh, 13. Matthew eleven thirteen. 13. They were so confused concerning Jesus. They said, he's Elijah, one of the prophets, Jeremiah. They were confused on John. Who is this guy? Matthew chapter 11, looking at verse 13, the Bible says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. Again, verse 11, Very I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. I will stand he that is least. And the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now he just says this. Some of them are listening, some of them are not listening. Some of them are questioning concerning this is Elijah, which is for to come. But they're not understanding the comparison. This is not the literal Elijah, which is to come. Look at Matthew chapter 17. It's not the literal resurrected Elijah. Remember, they wore the same type of clothes, they preached the same way, and God seen it fit to call John the Baptist Elijah. As a comparison, Matthew chapter 17, looking at verse 11, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they list. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. You see that? We just read Matthew 11, where it describes Jesus saying, this is Elijah. He said that in Matthew 11.
But in verse number 13, that's when they understand that he spoke about John uh, the Baptist concerning Elijah. It took them a few chapters to figure that out. They understood he was a son of God chapters ago. Even a Daniel mentioned. But concerning Elijah, they heard it in Matthew 11, but they didn't understand it or perceive it or question it. So in verse 13 is when they understood that portion. Look at uh, look at Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Malachi, again we go to the Old Testament real quick. Malachi 4, looking at verse number, uh, number 5 is where it's going to give us another description here. Uh, four or five the Bible says behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come smite the earth with the curse again all the Hebrews Pharisees Sadducees they're looking at this they're questioning is Elijah going to resurrect What's going to happen? They're trying to put all these scriptures together, rightly divide the Bible. They all got the Old Testament. They're trying to use it and, and choose. This is Elijah. Jesus is Elijah. No, he's Jeremiah. And who is that guy? Is he resurrected? Who, who, what is his identity? But Christ is the one that reveals. God is the one that reveals. Hey, John the Baptist, that was Elijah. Not the literal, but a metaphor comparison of his character. So, as we begin to, to read and begin to close, as we look at another scripture here, uh, look at uh, Isaiah chapter number 20. Isaiah chapter number 28, as we begin to close here. <clears throat> I want to start at verse number Isaiah 28, 19. Isaiah 28, uh, 19. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you for morning. By morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. It will be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than a, than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. What does that mean? What does that mean? The title of the lesson is uh, described in Isaiah 53, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. So in verse number 20, if a bed is shorter than you can stretch yourself on, <laughs> if the covering narrower than you can wrap yourself, you're uncomfortable. What did Jesus do? He made people uncomfortable with the truth. The Pharisees, Sadducees, they couldn't sleep. The Hebrews that didn't believe, they couldn't rest. They were astonished. They were amazed. They seemed the blind have their eyes open. Dead raised, lepers were healed, those who had crooked backs were healed. His word alone was an astonishment, and it came with power and authority. This was a time of unrest. Talk about anxiety. <laughs> Talk about stress because you don't want to believe. And so when it comes to uh, the other scriptures in, in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9 to get a description of what he did Isaiah chapter 9 looking at verse 1 nevertheless the diminish the dim, dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations we're going to talk about Galilee in a little bit but he afflicted her he afflicted the land of Zebulun Naphtali and then after that, grievously afflict her by the way of the sea. A little bit harder. He put the belt a little bit stronger on the way of the sea, by the way of the Sea of Jordan. And it says it was a vexation. A vexation constantly vexed by what Jesus Christ was doing. Now when you look at John chapter 7, as we look at the theme of Galilee, John chapter uh, number 7, this is dealing with a uh, conversation that we're having as I was saying, we're going to eavesdrop, the Holy Ghost is eavesdropping on some of these conversations. We're going to look at some of these conversations. Uh, John 7, verse 38. He that believed on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
But this spake he of the Holy of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is a true prophet. Here's the division I was talking about. Verse 41, others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? That's the debating point. That's a question they were asking. They were looking at the Old Testament scriptures. Is he going to come out of Galilee, though? Because I know he lives in Galilee. He's coming out of Galilee. I don't know if this is the God. I don't know. That's not him. Verse 42, had not the scriptures said that Christ cometh out of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? Let's check that documentation and let's check that debate that they were having. Because they were having uh, that debate uh, concerning Jesus Christ and concerning where he was going to be coming out of and coming uh, from. Look at Michael. Micah chapter 5, looking at verse number 2. To see if they're lying or are they telling the truth. In the Old Testament, we're going to go to this prophet called Micah. We're going to go to chapter 5. And let's look at verse 2. Because we're, what we're doing is putting our sandals on. And we're jumping in this time frame for a little bit. To get an idea of what type of debates they were having. To understand what kind of debates would I have been having if I was born in this time frame. What kind of questions would pop up during this time frame. And this was one. This was one. Look at Micah 5 verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, a Pepperta, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So they're not lying, but they are in a way because Micah chapter 5 verse 2 is a description of his birth place not his living place so he was born in Bethlehem but he lived in Galilee so they are having still this debate concerning his validity of being the Christ the Son of God and of who the Old Testament prophets Moses and the scriptures describe verse number 43 so there was a division among the people because of him and some of them would have taken him but no man laid hands on him then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto him, unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. He said, They said, Nobody has ever talked like this. Verse 47, Then answered them, the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? But the, this people who know not the law are cursed. Nicodemus said unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, does our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? Look what they said again. This is their debating point. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. So in their mind, they're understanding Micah 5 verse 2. They're studying that scripture, Micah 5 2, Bethlehem. But they're not understanding concerning come out. Okay, he was born from. So he's mocking them. They're mocking them in a way. Are you also from Galilee? You trying to represent Galilee? Are you that? You from there? He says, I don't Galilee arise no prophet. But we're going to look at a few scriptures here to look at where his parents uh, were from. Look at uh, Luke. Uh, Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. Get a detail here concerning uh, Christ. Luke chapter 1. I want to look at. Oh, I should actually. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Yeah. And verse number 4. Luke 2 4. The Bible says here. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called. Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, 
and wrapped him in the swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So, as he's making this journey, he went from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Why? Pay some taxes. And it says in verse 6, while they were there, the days came that she should be delivered. And so where was he born? Bethlehem. That's what is described in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. That's what the Pharisees did not understand when it comes to Michael 5, 2, where he's going to come out from. That doesn't mean he's going to live in Bethlehem. That just means where he's going to come from. And so that debate was a heavy debate that was going on during that time frame uh, concerning Jesus, uh, the Son of God. Look at another detail. Look at another detail uh, in... Uh, in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, a lot of the Hebrews, they were not reading their Bibles. They were not reading the Old Testament. So when Christ came, when he showed up, it was a surprise. And we got to be ready for his coming because it's going to be a surprise with fire. And then when he came, he was whipping. It was a vexation of tally through the coast of Jordan. Romans chapter 10, looking at verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth. Their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found of them that saw me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he said, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. They should have read these verses concerning. The salvation of the Gentiles. They should have been prepared. But a lot of them first didn't believe in Christ. They didn't believe concerning the kingdom. They didn't believe where his validity because he was from Galilee. They didn't believe uh, concerning uh, who he was and said that he was. And when it comes to the salvation of the Gentiles, they're definitely not going to believe that either. Because they've already accumulated a ton of unbelief concerning the first things that I mentioned. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. 1 Peter 1, 10. Again, uh, New Testament. Chapter 1. Looking at verse number 10. The Bible says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did testify, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached unto you the gospel unto you. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So this is powerful. The prophets desire to look into. They signify to the sufferings of Christ. They could understand when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen, or what kind of operations were going to be done. All the 600 prophecies that are talked about in the Old Covenant, they wanted to put those things together, line upon line, precept upon precept, and resolve them. And many of the Jews who believed, God increased and revealed unto them uh, the truth and the details of himself. Look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 20 as we, as we close. Looking at verse... I'm going to start at verse number Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. But some doubted. So as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at some of the eleven disciples, which were called. Some of them are doubting. We don't know how much. But the idea is that when it comes to God, he desires that we not believe, but have belief in him. I'm sure what he said, what he spoke, all these promises that are given unto us, and some doubted. So in the time frame of Christ, some doubted that were not followers of him. Some were unbelievers. Some understood half the truth concerning Christ. They needed more information. And then they later got the full details. We know in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where Paul is describing the New Testament and the old, the actually the New Testament, 
where he says in verse 9, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And so as Christ was on earth, even John the Baptist, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, as Jesus was approaching. But what did, what did he, he say and what did he send his disciples to check when he was in jail? Are you the one that should come or should we look for another? Isn't that what John the Baptist said concerning his own, his own cousin, I believe, Jesus Christ? He said, are you the one that should come or should we look for another? He was doubting at that time. And so when it comes to the scriptures that God has given us, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and his prophet, prophet for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so many of the Hebrews, they had misunderstanding concerning Christ. They didn't want to dig deep and ask questions. And some of them died lost because they just didn't want to believe and search. Some of them, as the Pharisees, in Acts 15, they did believe. They obeyed the gospel. But some of them still had a doctrine of circumcision. They didn't want to put that away. So why am I describing this? I'm putting ourselves in the sandals of the Hebrews in the time of Christ. So you can look at their debates, their discussions, their beliefs, their unbelief. And God and Christ was always seeking for us to believe those things which are written. And he will give us more when it comes to adding to our faith. That we can be complete. As Paul said, I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. And so as I begin to close this lesson, who had believed our, our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? We pray, and I pray that this lesson uh, will build you up and will edify you. Uh, and when it comes to, uh, you know, if there be anything otherwise minded, the Bible says God shall reveal even this. Uh, unto you in uh, Philippians 3 15 let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded if anything you be otherwise minded God should reveal even this unto you so that's the lesson I want to close also for those listening if you're outside the body of Christ understand that Christ he as the scriptures prophesied first Corinthians 15 he was going to be born of a virgin he was going to die bury resurrect point to the scriptures and he said in Matthew 16, 18, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In Acts chapter 2, 36, therefore let all the house of Israel know sure that God had made the same Israel, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. They said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And in Galatians 3, 27, it also says... For as many of you as have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. You can put them on a baptism if you're in a different city, different location. We can have a Bible study with you so you can put Christ on. And so you can begin to carry your cross. God is looking. All things are naked before him. Hebrews 4, verse 12. And he desires that we do his will, know his will first. And seek him with the whole heart. Love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That we can prepare to make heaven our home, Jesus said, I go and prepare a mansion that where I am, you may be also. And that's what God desires and Christ desires, that we, we be with him. We have to stay faithful until the end. That's the lesson. Uh, who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. And I'll toss it back over to our, uh, our brother Green. Just... Praise the Lord. And uh, thank you, my brother, for taking the time. I know we're successful together for us. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're good. Is there anyone that has not been learning tonight's lesson or anything else you may have you would like to bring to the group? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going back to Isaiah chapter 9. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6. 
And my question is this, um, where it says, and, he, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Now, those are the two I'm focusing on, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. What would you say to people that uh, would look at this scripture and knowing that it's describing Christ, but we're trying to say that not the same person? God bless you, brother. Thank you for that question. You know, and that answer is actually found in, uh, in John. If we go to John at this time, going to the, uh, the scriptures concerning Thomas. And we know what was said unto him when it comes to belief. Uh, it says in verse number 26, John 20, 26. After eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Now, I know a lot of people ask the question concerning, uh, they say he's the same person, but he, he's actually not. Uh, when Jesus said, when you've seen the, me, you've seen the Father also. Because remember, he was also asking the question in another chapter, you know, show us the Father. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But how can we validate that they're not the same person? Again, we got to go to other scriptures, rightly divided. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse, verse number 28, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So remember, the Son has to be subject unto the Father. The Son has the same characteristics uh, as the Father. If you look at uh, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter number one, Hebrews chapter number one, let's look at what God is saying in this chapter. Hebrews 1 8 but unto the son he says thy throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom thou hast loved righteousness hated iniquity therefore God even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows so here is saying he's saying to the son thy throne O God is forever and ever so there's a conversation between two different persons in this chapter. And so when it comes to what the Holy Spirit is writing in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and following, he is an image of the Father. So when he's calling him everlasting Father, mighty God, why? Because he is the same image as the Father. In verse 5, Hebrews 1, 5, 4, unto which of the angels said here at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, he shall be to be to me a son. It also describes in another uh, a chapter concerning, he didn't find it robbery to be equal uh, with God. He didn't find it robbery to be equal with God. And so that's the context concerning Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verse 6 and following. When it comes to that definition. And there's many other scriptures that describe the difference between the son and the father. He's having a conversation on the cross concerning the father. Why hast thou forsaken him? You know, if he's the same person, how can he forsake himself? And so the idea is that there is a father and there is a son. He says, this day have I begotten thee. So this day you were you created in Hebrews 1 verse 5. And... The father is the one that's telling the son that. But even as it says in Genesis chapter 1, 26, let us make man in our image. And what is the image of Christ? He is the image of the father, the likeness of the father. And so when Jesus is telling the disciples, when you've seen me, you've seen the father. So that's the definition concerning, I know the Pentecostals want to make you know, those definitions, and they want to twist those definitions, but that's how the Bible describes it. There's a Father, there's a Son, and there's a Holy Spirit. Thank you, my brother. Is there anyone else that has any questions? Um, uh, 
money tonight, money or anything else that you may have at this time that you would like to bring to the group? Uh, yeah, I, I have a question. Um, in Romans uh, 10, 18, I'll read it. Uh, but I said, you read this. Uh, but I said, I have not heard. Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the end of the word. And then it discusses Moses. And basically, uh, my question is, in regard to Romans 120, where it says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, for they are without excuse. My question is, in, in conjunction with your study tonight, which was absolutely off the chain, um, how could you reconcile Romans 10, 18, and Romans 1, 20 to your study? Great teaching, great, great comparison too, my brother. When you look at Romans chapter 1, we're looking at verse uh, uh, number uh, 17, it says, For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed unto heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto for well, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And it, sh it shows and describes the changing of the glory of God unto things made like the corruptible man, birds, these creepy things. So when it comes to what God is shown, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world, when it comes to 18, it says righteousness, godliness, what is right in their conscience, not to sleep with animals, and not to beat your wife. There's things that God reveals in them, but they change that. There's a change that gets made in Romans chapter 1 is a description of it. That may be known of God, Manifest in God's children unto them. Remember in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image. They're made in the image of God. That's without the Holy Ghost. And there are certain things that God put in their spirit, their character, that's not like an animal, nothing like an animal. And those things, they have it in them. But as they look at this world, they look at the Egyptian gods, Philistine gods. They look at the lust of things. When it comes to orgies, when it comes to sleeping with animals, when it comes to pedophilia. And what they do, they change the character of God that God instilled in them. Homosexuality, they change that into their own image. And so God put it in them, but within themselves, they desire to make a change to them. And so that, that without the Holy Spirit, you know, God has put it in their hearts. Now, when you look at Romans uh, chapter number 10... Romans chapter number 10, uh, looking at verse number uh, 17, again, it talks about faith. So then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth, their words unto the ends of the world. It starts at verse 16, too. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Isaiah said, Lord, who have our report again, quoting Isaiah 53. Who believes our report? Who's going to believe? Uh, our message because remember Isaiah went out those books went out Moses went out Jeremiah that's a book that's well known if all the Jews are reading it all the other nations are knowing what those Jews are reading you know the Jews read Isaiah the Jews read Jeremiah the Jews read Moses you ever read that book before you ever heard about oh, that yes. book you know what they see <laughs> so, but I say did not Israel know now it says did not Israel know? So first in verse 18, their sound, barely their sound went into all the earth and their words into the end of the world. He's talking about the world in verse 18. Verse 19, he says, but did not Israel know? They're supposed to know too. For most that I would provoke into jealousy by them that are no people, 
by a foolish nation will I anger you. So now he's describing who's supposed to be known. It's the word went out to all the world. The word went out to all of Israel. They're supposed to know. But when the time came, they were envious of the Gentiles. Why? Because the old covenant, they weren't paying attention to it when it describes the salvation of the Gentiles. And so, I hope that answers your question, my brother. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, would, could you add the caveat that that applies to the day that the word, that the sound has gone to all the earth and the, yeah. the words to the end of the earth as well? So there's no place that it should not have heard the word of God. Yeah. God, make sure that we all hear it. Amen. God, make sure that everybody hears it, even to those in, in the deserts or into the uh, forests and the jungles. Remember, the time frame that uh, in Acts 17 that Paul was in Athens, what did he do? He passed through Athens, seen all the false gods. He preached unto them the resurrection. What does the Bible say? Some believed and some did not. So what happens when you find a tribe that's out somewhere? They don't believe in Christ. They even heard the word. Some of them chose to believe. Some of them chose not to believe. You know, some of the Pharisees at the time didn't believe. What happened later, they, some of them believed afterward. But their problem was some of them were holding on to the circumcision of Moses, which was done away with. And so it's, it's going to happen that way. So God bless you, my brother. Thank you. God bless you also. Go ahead, Brother Lord. Brother Lewis. Brother Lewis, here, my brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, cut off. I cut, cut off for a minute. Oh, uh, great job, brother Javier. I really enjoyed putting on my uh, sandals and walking these scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a quick. Uh, could you uh, just uh, comment a little bit on? I know you used, uh, you went to John chapter ten, verse. 28 and 29, I believe. And I know some try to still hold on to say, uh, once saved, always saved, using the scripture. Could you just touch on this a little bit? John chapter 10, 28, 29. That's where it said, oh yes, I read that. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them is greater than all. Mm -hmm. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone. And so, what was your question again, my brother? No, I was going to say, could you just touch on it a little bit more? Because I know that some are using the scripture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just say that. They're saying, all right. I got you. Yeah, when it comes to this scripture, they can read it. It's in John 10, 20, 29. But just because they have uh, uh, lips that they can read it, doesn't mean that they're saved. They have to still follow what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, where he said, Go into all the world. Actually, I want to read it. He said, uh, Go on ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things which were our command of you. Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So when it comes to the scripture that we just read in John chapter 10, they may say that with their mouth, that nobody can pluck me out of my father's hand. But the idea is that they, if they have not obeyed the gospel, the teaching that Paul had to obey, that uh, Cornelius had to obey, you know, that... The eunuch had to obey. That was the first teaching when it comes to them being saved. And when it comes to John chapter 10, no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. Yeah, if we're faithful as well, we'll stay in his hand as well. Because there's a falling away, as our brother Leslie has taught about before concerning losing your salvation. So John, I'm um, sorry. Yeah. John chapter 10, verse 28. You give those eternal life who are faithful unto the end as well. So you got to look at all the promises that Jesus made. Be thou faithful unto death. I give them eternal life. No one should pluck them out of my Father's hand. And so when it comes to God, He has the saints in His hand. He's teaching them His will. He's building them up. No one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. Romans chapter 8, 
what is it saying Romans chapter 8 in comparison to the scripture and this is only to the Christian you have to become a Christian in order to be in God's hand remember you have to be born again in order to be written in the Lamb's book of life Romans chapter number 8 uh, looking at verse number uh, number 33 who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect it is God that justifies who is he that condemned it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also make the intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, these things we are more and conquerors through the love is for I am persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus and so when it comes to God's love he has it in his hand but remember you have to love the truth you have to love the truth and what is the truth God is truth and God is love but the truth is that he gave a commandment to go into all the world he that believes in his baptized should be saved he that believes not shall be damned that is the truth that is his love for the world on what they have to do to be saved and if they are just reading John 10, 20 through 29, pick up a Bible, they're coming out of jail, they're coming out of the Baptist church, the Methodist church, Presbyterian church, and they just read that verse, they're not understanding that just because they read it doesn't mean that they're saved. They have to go and come out from among them and be added to the Lord's body to be saved. That's why a lot of people have a problem with the body of Christ. They say, you guys think you're the only ones going to heaven. But again, just like we put on our sandals, they're not putting on their sandals. They're not going through the scriptures to find out what Jesus did when he was on earth, what he built. They're not finding that out. They're just going by what grandmother said, grandfather said, going to the same church their relatives went to. That's all they're doing. They're not digging, searching, concerning what Christ has done, what God has done. A lot of them are like the Jews. When they were on earth they did not believe in him today when they reject the church they reject God, Christ's salvation through being born again John 3 5 through 8 they're the same they're in the same state as the blind Hebrews that didn't want to believe in Christ when he was on earth God bless them. next step we are not just want to add if what they're saying is true concerning uh, that scripture in John, then that would make the Bible contradict itself because John would be saying one thing and Peter would be saying something else when you get to Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 and following. And we know that the Bible harmonizes and doesn't contradict itself. I just wanted to share that, my brother. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments? Right. If we don't, oh, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying out a microphone. Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine, bro. Okay, great. Uh, brother Javier, great, great lesson. Um, my, my brother, I'm gonna have to give you a preacher nickname, like, like they, like they gave, like they gave preachers in the, in the, in the book. Uh, I'm gonna name you the the spiritual the Uzi, my brother, because you 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 rattle off a lot of scriptures and, and, uh, and they're, they're very helpful. Good good laps and good teaching, my brother. Um, oh, that's my I'm uh, I work on a new name for you too. <laughs> uh, my my question, <clears throat> excuse me, my question to you is, as it relates to the Messiah. Um, there's a couple of scriptures that talks about the coming of the Messiah. Um, which 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 ones would you use to to highlight uh, um, those 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 past prophecies in the Old Testament when they were saying that the Messiah is coming? It mentions it in uh, John chapter number four, my brother. John chapter four, where the Samaritan woman was saying. In uh, verse number 25, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. 
when he is come, he will tell us all things. So that's a good scripture to use. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, which, which one would you use? It's listed in uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter, chapter number 9, verse 25 and 26, as well concerning uh, the Christ the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Well, also, I forgot to mention another scripture where I believe uh, Moses said it. That God is going to raise up a prophet like unto me. And that's a, an old covenant as well. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you, too. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments? Whether it's concerning my question or anything else. All right. If... Yeah. If we don't, uh, is there anybody that has any prayer requests before we close out? Uh, what I would like to uh, also ask is that uh, we remember in our prayers uh, once again those that are being joined at Holy Matrimony today. Uh, Chief Brother Nick and Sister Dina in your prayers, uh, the start of their marriage, and also. Uh, the couple that Brother Stevenson is marrying today also keep them lifted up in their prayers as well. Um, and with that being said, if there's no further questions or comments, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Lewis, my brother, if you don't mind, if you'll close it out with a word of prayer. Yes, let us pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight's study. We thank you for uh, your master, Brother Javier, uh, with this great lesson. We thank you, Father, for the hope and the promises that we have in your Son, Christ Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will help us uh, tonight that are here wanting to uh, search the scriptures for truth, to uh, continue to look up on those things that are above, where Christ is. And we, you know he's sitting at the right hand. Uh, Father, we just pray that you will help us to look up these things that are above and not on these things on this earth. Uh, that you will help us in our Christian walk, Father. We ask prayers, Father, for, the, for those that, uh, the names lifted up, for those who are, uh, will be joining together in union and matrimony. Uh, we're, we're thankful for that, uh, that, that union, Father, for that, uh, for them to come together and be husband and wife. We ask that you will, uh, put a blessing upon that marriage, Father. Uh, we pray, Father, they will continue to put you first, Father, uh, in their, in their lives and walking that you will bless them, Father, may be fruitful. Uh, we ask, Father, as we uh, prepare to uh, uh, return to our uh, to our place of uh, we're at home, but get some rest, Father. We prepare for tomorrow's uh, Lord's Day for worship, Father. That you will protect us and that you will guide us, Father. That you will keep us. Uh, we ask, pray for those who are on here, Father, on the Zoom call. That uh, for the families, for each of their loved ones, those who may be going through some. Uh, 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 pains and aches in their bodies, Father. We just know those things are temporary, Father. We just pray we will take our trust in you, Father. We ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for that prayer, Father Lord. Uh, also, don't forget this coming Monday, if you will mm -hmm. uh, we'll be continuing in the book of Hosea, and it'll be Hosea chapter 8. I just want to say again, what job, Father Lord. Um, on on uh, this past Thursday with Hosea chapter seven, brother, you know, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God teacher. Just remember Hosea chapter eight this coming month. And with that being said, everyone, may God be blessed to each and every one of you. Love you all. Love you Christ. Until we meet again. Good night. Good night, buddy. Thanks, brother. Good job, brother. Good job, brother. Good night. 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 Good night.